Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about my most worn items of 2019. If you've been following my most worn series, then you'll know that I've actually been keeping a spreadsheet where I tally up every single time I wear an item. So I go in there and I manually and put the data. I'm sure that there are way better ways to do it, but this is just what works for me. And I've taken a look at the entire year across the 10 categories that I've been tracking. And I'm going to share with you my most worn item in each category. And I feel like it can be a good way to get a sense of what your wardrobe is lacking or maybe where you need to bolster certain areas in your closet for the year ahead if you're doing any planning for what your wardrobe may or may not need. So I'm going to start with the top that I wore the most and it's probably a little surprise that it was a classic white tee. This one is from Redone and what I really, really liked about this particular t-shirt is the fact that it's more of a slimmer fit. So it's not super oversized. It has these very short sleeves that are almost capped and the crew neck, it doesn't cut too high but it's also not too low and the length of it is not too long either so it's really good for tucking into anything high waisted. This is really expensive so I actually bought this during one of Shopbop's spend and save sales I think it was. I got it quite a while ago uh, and I'm really glad that I purchased it. Redone were kind enough to also send me the black one and I love both equally. I just think that they are such a nice kind of almost vintage washed cotton. It doesn't have, it's not that silky soft kind of cotton, it's got a bit of a heft to it. It feels a little bit more substantial. But you can see it is slightly sheer in this sort of creamy ivory white color. But yeah, it's held up really well. The only thing I will say in terms of wear is that around the collar you may notice that it has sort of puckered slightly, which is from me pulling it off the hanger through the neckline, which I actually stopped doing. So now what I do is I pull the hangers down underneath just so that I can make sure that it lasts longer in my closet. The other thing I wanted to mention is obviously being in my third trimester, a lot of the, these things don't fit me the way they used to so what I'm going to do instead is insert photos of how these all look on uh, which hopefully should give you a good sense or maybe I can find some videos from some of my oldest styling videos to show you how they look on. But yeah, that is the first one. Then we move into knitwear. And again, it was another really neutral piece. And you'll kind of see this is a bit of a theme throughout my most worn items. I really love neutral classic items, things that I can wear over and over again that feel timeless and that don't stand out too much but just really complement a great classic look. So my most worn sweater was from Mott and Bow, and this one was gifted to me. This is one of their cashmere crewnecks in the ivory colour and I got a size medium in this one. I got a small in the redone tee by the way. <laughs> but yeah, um, I got this in a medium because I wanted it to be super oversized and really cosy and just feel like, I, don't, I, I just wanted it to feel all nice and wrapped up in a cloud. This is very, very soft. I have heard some people comment um, who have purchased from Mott & Bow saying that the sweaters they bought weren't you know, as soft as mine feels and I can say that the black one that I've got doesn't feel as soft as this white one so I'm not sure if it has to do with the dyeing process. I have mentioned this a few times and if anyone has any insight on this I would love to know uh, but this one is so cozy. It feels like a dream to wear and it has worn really well too. I have hand washed this and I've had no issues. Um, there is like very, very mild pilling that you can barely see. I will probably give this a little bit of a spruce up using a cashmere comb before next autumn winter, but I can't wait to wear this again. The, there is a huge size discrepancy between the small and the medium, so the small fits uh, slightly more closer cut to the body, whereas this is very oversized on me, which I personally like, so just do keep that in mind uh, if you have been looking at picking one of these up. When it comes to dresses, I feel like these are really something that I started to reach for more once I found out that I was pregnant uh, and they are a huge part of my style uniform at the moment because you can wear something really soft and loose and flowy and it, you just feel great and amazing in it. Plus it's an entire outfit in one. Uh, so the dress that I wore is actually one I got around the middle of the year and it was one I bought specifically for the pregnancy and it is from Karen Walker and I've talked about this a few times. Uh, this is just a really beautiful gingham mini dress and it has this sort of handkerchief style detail down the front. It also has this uh, ruching detail at the neckline which you can adjust using a bow here and it's got concealed pockets and 
I just adore this. I managed to get it for such a good price on eBay and I'd actually been looking for this dress for a number of years. So it was just a happy coincidence that I managed to find it around the time that I fell pregnant. But I went a few sizes up. So I got this in a 12 and it's perfect because I'm pretty sure I should be able to wear this throughout my entire pregnancy, which was kind of the aim with this particular purchase. But I always feel amazing when I wear this. My only little niggle is that I wish that the armholes were a bit shorter as I do need to wear a bandeau or something underneath just to protect my modesty from the side but yeah this has been my most worn dress and definitely one I see myself wearing a lot in the summers to come as well next we have outerwear and I think this probably these probably won't come as any surprise the blazer that I wore the most was my wool blazer from Everlane now I have talked about this quite a few times I remember when this initially launched and I probably took a week before I decided that I wanted to buy it and by that point I'd missed out so put my name on the wait list and I snapped it up as soon as they relaunched it and I'm so so thrilled with it you do kind of want to size down with this because it is very oversized so I have the US 2 and I actually generally wear a US 2 in Everlane outerwear because I do find it does fit on the larger end of the spectrum but the quality of this is really beautiful it has that really nice raw wool texture on the exterior I love the herringbone design on it as well I just think it's very subtle but just it's beautiful it adds to the jacket it's fully lined it's more of a lightweight transitional jacket I would say for me perfect for Australian winters uh, especially our Sydney winters because they are so mild I can generally get away with wearing this in lieu of a coat so I uh, absolutely love this. It looks amazing belted as well. Um, and yeah, that is my most worn blazer. Then we've got my most worn coat. And this was one that was gifted to me. And actually, I do have a discount code for W Concept if you ever are wanting to shop from there, which I will leave in the uh, description box below. And uh, this is my Kinder Salmon coat. Now, I first saw this on Felicia Ackerstrom, which if you aren't following her, I highly recommend it. She is so stylish and she has that whole Scandi Parisian chic thing completely nailed. I, if I could steal someone's wardrobe, it would be hers for sure. And I spotted this on her and I really loved it. And it was just by chance that Kinder Salmon was one of the brands on W Concept. So I picked this out and I have loved wearing this so much. I can't wait to wear it again for 2020. I love the color of it because it is so different to anything else that I have in my wardrobe being a neutral and it really encouraged me to wear a lot more lighter colors throughout winter which generally I would wear a lot more black and navy and dark gray so this really made me step out of my uh, comfort zone a bit and wear more white denim with uh, muted neutrals like beiges, grayges, uh, taupey kind of colors which I really really enjoyed and that's definitely something I want to carry throughout 2020 as well. Uh, this is a one size fits all which is my only kind of niggle with this coat. I do wish that they had proper sizing so if you are on the petite end of the spectrum maybe a little bit oversized on you. Uh, I am 172 centimeters tall for reference for the photos um, but it's just really beautiful quality. It feels really nice and substantial. I would say if you live in a climate where it goes quite considerably below zero this is not going to be your winter coat. You're probably going to need something that is more of a big oversized duffel coat, something that has got down in it or, you know, something that's a bit more substantial than this. But this is beautiful if you live in a climate where your winters don't go below zero or very rarely go below zero. Uh, I've, I love the length of it, the robe style. Aside from the sizing, there's really nothing I don't like about this coat. I just think it looks incredibly luxurious. It is more of a splurge, but I think when you are getting a really beautiful and well-made coat, uh, you should invest in it, especially as, as it's gonna be something that you wear year on year on year. The next few items I actually packed away because they do not fit me at all at the moment because they are all things that are high-waisted and right now I am really missing my waist. I do not have one at all. <laughs> So the first thing I wanted to talk about were shorts and my most worn shorts were my Dr. Denim blue wash shorts which I just bloody adore. I think they are so fantastic, they're so classic, they aren't super tight, I like the fact that they are a little bit longer so they're still short but they you know cover up my bum and they don't make me feel like I'm exposed at all and they just look great with everything. They have a high rise, really comfortable, I believe they're 100% cotton 
denim shorts so they don't have any kind of give to them. I wear an AU8 in mine just for reference and I'm usually, or well, at least pre-pregnancy, I was a 25 in jeans so hopefully that should give you a sense but if you're in between sizes go up. I'm not sure if they still have them but they do similar styles so I will try and link something down in the description box below so you can go and check out a similar option but Dr. Denim is, has just fast become I would say one of my favourite denim brands for sure. Then we have my most worn skirt and it's my J.Crew white denim skirt. I bought this almost three years ago now when I was in Dallas and it has been one of the best purchases that I've ever made for my closet. I love the way that this fits, it fits very nice and high up on the waist. It has a frayed look to the hem, which I like because it kind of gives it more of a relaxed feel, especially if you're wearing it with a blazer, which is something I quite often like to do. Uh, but it's just one of my favorite pieces in my closet. One of the things that I was really sad that I wasn't going to be able to get to wear because of being pregnant throughout summer. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I can wear it once baby arrives for a little bit before it gets too cold here in Sydney, but we'll see what happens. But yeah, not surprised that that was my most worn skirt just because of how much I love it. It does fit really big. So as I mentioned, I'm usually at 25. My waist before I got pregnant measured around 62 centimeters and I got this in a a size 23 so that's two sizes down from what I would normally get I do find that J Crew vanity size in general so across the board I usually have to size down a little bit whenever I'm shopping from there but yeah um, it's one of their classic staple styles so if you have been on the hunt for a white denim skirt I really can't recommend that one enough it does come in a petite option as well which is really good I would be very surprised if you didn't know what my most worn jeans were of 2019 it's my dr. denim high-waisted skinny jeans I bought these close to six years ago now which is just crazy to think that I've had them that long I had them taken in at the ankle and also taken up slightly but the denim itself is just so comfortable it's a really nice it's got a nice amount of heft to it it, it feels substantial but it's really stretchy and they are so comfortable it's almost like wearing leggings and I love the fact that these have such a high rise because being someone with very short legs for my height so I have a 28 inch inseam to my ankle which is very short considering that I'm 172 centimeters I've seen girls who are three inches shorter than me be able to wear trousers longer than I can uh, so I think I've got almost a petite length inseam, a uh, very long torso. So I find that that super high rise really helps to balance out my proportions and I just personally find it very flattering for me. So those are my number one. Unfortunately that particular style is no longer available. I think they were called the Zoe with a Y on the end. Uh, however they do have similar options and again I mean I did get them taken in at the ankle so either way if you wanted the same look you would need to get them tailored. Something I recommend doing with all trousers anyway and jeans as well if you want to get them fitting perfectly for you. So this next item which is my most worn trousers definitely is on that neutrals theme which I totally love the direction that my wardrobe has been going in this past year. I love the addition of neutrals and those light colours. I find them really flattering for my skin tone uh, and also because I do have darker hair it, I feel like it doesn't wash me out so much. It is my Topshop stone trousers. I feel like every single time I wear these I get so many questions about where they're from and I get so many compliments on them because they are so flattering. They're a peg leg trouser which nip in at the waist and I have to say I'm so sorry that these are no longer available. I bought them in February 2019 I think, if memory serves me, and uh, it was a nightmare for me to even drag them down in my size. I have talked about this in a previous video so I won't bore you with the details but I love the fact that they are cropped, that they come in at the ankle. I just find that that is particularly flattering around that region. It makes your ankles look narrower and it also kind of has a leg lengthening effect. Uh, and the colour as well is just perfection. It looks great with white, looks great with similar coloured stone pieces. It also looks great with darker colours in my wardrobe as well in addition to camel tones, that sort of thing. So it's just been such a joy to have those in my wardrobe and they're something I cannot wait to wear again next year. I did get them in a size six, which generally I prefer a size eight in Topshop trousers. I'm in between sizes generally, so I'm kind of really hoping I will still be able to fit them. If not, I might have to see if I can get a solution at the tailor, if they can let them out or put a little panel down the side so they still fit me. We'll figure it out, but <laughs> they are definitely hands down one of my favorite pieces in my wardrobe that I bought in 2019, uh, but also I'm not surprised at all that they were my most worn pair of trousers. 
Finally, we'll wrap this up with my most worn shoes. I actually didn't track what bags I was wearing in 2019, so that is definitely something I'm going to be doing for 2020 because I think that'll be really fascinating to see what bags I'm reaching for the most because at the moment it's just what I think I've worn the most, so that's why I'm not going to include it. Uh, but yeah, shoes. Uh, I have two pairs here that I wore the same amount of times, 37 times each. One were gifted to me, one pair I purchased myself. The pair that were gifted to me were the Eveline Dayglove Re-Knits. Now, I've talked about these a few times about how comfortable they are and how if you are going to purchase a pair of the Dayglove's, these are the ones that I would recommend. I have wide feet, I have a bunion on my left foot which sticks out quite prominently and I have found these so comfortable. Haven't had a single blister from wearing these and they are great for walking around all day. These are actually perfect for taking with you when you are traveling because they are so lightweight, very compact and they sort of just flatten down like that. Um, I just really enjoyed wearing them. I do wish that the vamp didn't come up quite so high as that's sort of one of those very modern details that I prefer the classic ballerina style which is a little bit higher cut up the foot but that's just one little detail. They are just so comfortable to wear and because of that it was a shoe that I reached for a lot particularly during the colder months um, and they do have a little leather tab at the back. I would say I wouldn't wear these when it is raining at all but any other time of the year brilliant 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 shoes to have on. The second pair are the ones that I bought myself and these are my Jane Debster slides and these were kind of what I had purchased in lieu of these Saint Laurent New Pierre sandals uh, a while ago to try and fill that void in my wardrobe because as you guys know the Saint Laurent sandals are very expensive. I managed to finally get a pair during the Black Friday sales for 50% off which I thought was a really good deal um, but yeah, these ones have been one of my most worn pairs so again I wore these ones 37 times as well. I love the colour of them, they are so comfortable. At first I did get some blisters I recall when I was wearing them but now I don't have any issues with them at all and they are very very comfortable, they accommodate my wide feet um, and very easy to slip on especially when it is hot so these are one of the pairs of shoes I wear a lot around the house as well. So that rounds up my most worn items for 2019. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. It was really fascinating to go through and actually see what the items were that I ended up reaching for the most in each category and actually seeing also what the other most worn items were in my wardrobe because I did it all in my spreadsheet and it was very easy to kind of tally up those counts. Uh, I would love to know what items you maybe have worn the most over the past year. Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, and I will be continuing the series in 2020. I find it really useful to be able to take a look back at the end of each season and see what it was that were those key items that I couldn't live without, the ones that really defined my style. So you'll definitely be seeing these ones pop up at the end of each season. Thank you so much for watching. I, as I said before, I really hope you enjoyed this and I will see you again next time with a brand new video. See you soon. Bye.